Hello everyone, this is Vikas and Nick from Tetrate. At Tetrate, we work at Istio and uh, other service mesh technologies around Istio. In this talk, we are going to discuss and uh, share our experiences and learnings that we gained while working with some of our large enterprise customers, trying to help them in meshifying their multi-cluster installations. This talk is roughly divided into four sections. In the first section, we will discuss about the complexity and the manageability issues in the uh, large-scale multi-cluster installations. Then, assuming that Service Mesh and Istio is going to help in managing these problems, we will see the gap and pain points if we try to follow the Istio community suggested multi-cluster installation approaches for overlaying Istio Mesh. Uh, on the multi-cluster installations. And then we will discuss in the next two sections, our, our approach, which is a bit more practical and, and, and how it, it is addressing the pain points and the gaps that we found in the community suggested installation approaches. So next, uh, uh, passing over to Nick to start with the problems of the multi-cluster installations. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations, everybody. You've been you've made it to multi-cluster. You successfully scaled your application from a single cluster to multiple. But you're looking at back, and your SLAs haven't improved. Um, you broke a bunch of security rules in doing so, um, so that you could get the networking to connect properly. And then you're realizing that management has got a lot more difficult. Uh, it seems like the problems that you're facing are bigger than the ones you were doing earlier. So trading off a better SLA for more problems didn't really seem advantageous to you. And so we're going to walk through some of these problems that a lot of our customers have early on when they're adopting the multi-cluster model. The first one that we want to talk about is the, this is a typical deployment. That, we, that you would see when you go from a, a one to multi-cluster environment. Um, typically, you would have a, a load balancer within the cluster. Um, Nginx Ingress is like the default one that most of you are probably familiar with. And then we connect all of those clusters and do the routing with a tier one, which we call tier one load balancer, which is typically your, your cloud load balancer. And that's so you have a single point of entry and can route between multiple clusters. But your, your team one, you, you've been tasked to move your microservice from one cluster into a multi-cluster environment. Now. Um, you're, you're gonna follow the coattails of team two who's already been doing it for a little while. And so you're gonna take your application and stick it behind that same default load balancer that, that team one or team two has been using. But all of a sudden you start knowing you have more outages than you have before. Uh, you've bound yourself now to the failures of team two. Uh, team two's errors have now become your problem because when they have problems, their low balance, they cause a low balance to be removed from the pool, which is now causing outages for you. And so there's, all, there's cases where going multi-cluster doesn't actually make anything better. And so we're gonna have some solutions that will address these problems in a very practical way. Um, secondly, uh, when you go to this typical multi-cluster routing, you're, you don't have a good way of being able to tell your microservice how to locally address services if they're like within your cluster or within your region. And so to get the HA availability, you're going to have to call out, outside of your cluster to that tier one load balancer to get uh, access to that other microservice that you're, or service that you're trying to access. And so if you, you typically only have like two options, either you route externally to that load balancer or directly internally to that, that cluster that you're on. But if you route locally and that, that pod or that service is down, you have no failover. And finally, as your multi-cluster architecture grows, you can, get some really complex dependency chains. Um, you, you, it'd be very difficult for you to trace all of, the, all of the consumers that depend on you and your functionality. And so 
without service mesh, you'll find these problems are very prevalent. Um, and so then you'll be looking for that solution, which, you know, service mesh seems to be the one that'll, that'll solve these problems for you. And so as you're adopting service mesh, there's a lot of questions that our customers are asking. And how do you go about doing it in the correct way? You know, am I adding more complexity to my architecture when multi-cluster has already made it complex? Um, I chose Istio, and now when I upgraded it, I lost connectivity to everything. And so we're having larger production outages. Um, do I need to re-architect my multi-cluster setup so that I can adopt service mesh? And so a lot of these questions um, we'll answer later in the slides. And now I'll pass over to Vikas to start with the Istio solution. Sure. Uh, so yeah, there is no denying that uh, Istio is super powerful. It can, Istio can help in, uh, in, 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 Istio can help in managing these complexities of multi-cluster installations, but but how exactly I'm going to overlay Istio mesh over multi-cluster installations? Because there are different teams, different, different personas, different uh, administrative uh, boundaries over these clusters. So how, how one is going to do that? So uh, we'll start with taking a look over what the Istio community uh, documentation has been suggesting. So at the moment there are uh, in the latest release, which is 1.7, there are two multi-cluster installation approaches. The one is replicated control planes and another one is shared control plane. Because of the resiliency requirements, we can uh, rule out the shared control plane approach. And let's take a deeper look at the replicated control planes approach. So how this works is that, um, in your clusters, each cluster has an independent uh, Istio control plane running, and the and the CA of each of the Istio's control plane on these clusters is configured with the intermediate CAs, which which are generated from the sh same shared root CA. The services which are the shared services and are supposed to be uh, accessed from the remote clusters are exposed through service entries. For example, here the service foo, which is in the cluster two, is exposed on the cluster one using a service entry. And the host name in the service entry has uh, this dot global prefix added to the name and namespace of the service. And the endpoints of the service entry points to the gateways of the remote clusters. At runtime, it looks something like this. When a client makes a request, it goes to Kubernetes a DNS server. Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes DNS, we have to run with a uh, core DNS plugin, which is shipped uh, by Istio. All, so all the dot .global prefixed hostname queries, uh, uh, Kubernetes DNS pass these queries to core DNS, and core DNS resolves these um, uh, these host name uh, DNS queries with the virtual IP of the service entry. And using this uh, virtual IP, uh, the sidecar picks up the listener. And there the listener has the, is pointing to the remote gateway where the actual, the service is, the backend service is running. And this way the request reaches the cluster tools gateway. And SNI host it still has the host name which has dot global prefix, so it won't make to the actual backend service. So there a, an on way filter is configured to, to translate this dot global from the SNI host to the dot service dot cluster dot local. So now um, the, the, this gateway on the cluster two can finally forward the request to the actual service implementation. But can we can we use this in our production environments? Unfortunately, not. And why not? Is because it it doesn't support locality aware routing out of the box. We cannot simply if if we have um, if we have a local instance of the service running in cluster. Ideally, it is desired that the 
for, that the first priority should be uh, the the request should be served by the local instance. So um, we should be able to somehow the local instance should be part of the load balancer pool. But we cannot simply here in this approach we cannot simply put the cluster IP in the service entry endpoints. And the reason is the same this dot global thing. We can fix this. We can make it correct by adding um, virtual service to uh, rewrite this host name, converting this dot global to canonical name of the service in the local uh, local cluster. But this problem is not the only problem. There is, there is there are much bigger problems than this in this approach. The so so the host names in the clients uh, are directly depending on the actual backend implementation of the services. So let me explain you with this example here. The actual service is foo, which is running in the foo NS namespace in the cluster two. So the, the clients on the remote clusters here at the cluster one should use the host name, uh, which is the service name, actual service name dot service namespace dot global. And this is pretty bad because if there are uh, n number of clusters, Serving this uh, uh, service, serving this API, serving this service, then uh, the the owner of these uh, services cannot change the backend implementation of the service at all, because the clients will get broken in that case. So, in other words, we can say there is no abstraction. The clients are directly depending on the actual backend implementation, and there is no very straightforward locality aware routing as well. These points are already acknowledged by the Istio community as well. And we also part of this community and we have been working to come up with better installation approaches. So in the 1.8, uh, we have this a new approach and, and this replicated control plane is not there anymore in the coming releases. But uh, so in this approach, for example, which is coming, here, each, uh, here, here also we have a stereo control plane running in each of the clusters. And what change here is this, that the STOD of each cluster is watching the API servers of all the remote clusters. So this solves the locality the, uh, aware routing problem because, uh, because the endpoints it has, uh, because it has all the local endpoints and the remote endpoint in the same LB pool. But the problem of the direct dependency on the canonical name of the service and namespace is still there. Still there is no abstraction. And plus the scalability issues are there and the security concerns are there. Because these clusters are owned by different teams and they may not want to expose all their internal implementation of the services uh, uh, to other teams. So that's where we, we had to come up with a different approach to meet the requirements of our customers. And now I'm passing over to Nick to explain our approach. Yeah, so we, we took a look at this um, and looked at our customers' problems. And our customers have many, many clusters that they want to connect together um, and span multiple clouds. Uh, and so we, we wanted an approach that was somewhat simplistic and practical to their use cases. And it didn't require a lot of um, architectural, core architectural changes within their environments to adopt this um, service mesh architecture. Um, and then we also want to put a little, a little bit of the de application developer in mind when we, when we deploy these. Um, and so what kind of developer mindset did we try to assume when we were coming up with this solution? Uh, well, developers just want to consume applications as SaaS products even internally, they want to access your API, um, that, uh, assume that it's HA and that you're, you're routing locally or you know, efficiently. And so they don't really necessarily care where your, your service is hosted, it's that they can just reach it um, easily. They wanna spend more time on implementing the features that are really gonna drive that product um, rather than spending time on a lot of the implementation details that with auth routing networking and a lot of stuff that comes with service mesh or or even without and they want to be able to advertise their own products um, effectively and easily to either external customers or to other teams within their organization and so with that in mind 
we came up with a, a much more simplistic approach to uh, an Istio installation. And that's uh, um, by deploying Istio essentially isolated per cluster. Um, we deploy the control plane on every cluster. We scope that control plane to only know about services within the cluster that it's residing. And so we have a locally scoped mesh. Um, we say that you should manage these control planes externally, and you can do so with a number of tools, um, CI tools, GitHub. And so that'll take away the, the managing everything individually. Um, and then we, the final point is we really want you to embrace gateways a little bit differently than you are today and expand upon the use of those. Um, but why, so why do we want to do separate Istio control plans? Well, we really want to align the failure domains of your application to that cluster. And so if you push bad configs or you upgrade Istio incorrectly and it causes an outage, it is now localized to that cluster that you were with. And so it gives you a lot more control over not bringing down your entire environment. Uh, and it aligns that issue control plane with the underlying cluster that it's running at, so networking and node management, stuff like that. And so it's a lot, a lot more effective for our customers in managing these ways, in case, especially for outages. Um, and then it also allows you to do safer upgrades. So as you upgrade issue, you might be able to pick a cluster that has less usage update that one. If it goes successfully, then you can roll it out to other clusters. Um, and this, this would differ from the shared control plane that um, was one of the Istio recommendations. Um, but we have a problem. We can't, then applications can, cannot see app services in other clusters. And so we need to adjust this problem. And so the way that um, we at uh, Tetrate uh, want you to go about doing this is by embracing gateways. And gateways are just load balancers that are fronting your applications. Um, but we want you to use them on a product focused um, architecture. And so currently you're probably using the Nginx ingress gateway, or you're, if you're using Istio, the default ingress gateway and Istio system. But we want you to kind of get rid of those and move to these product focused gateways. And so in Istio, that's really easy. Um, you can just stand up any number of ingress gateways and then determine the services that are, are behind it or upstream from it. And so these product focused gateways then allow you to control the, the microservices behind it as if there are one API. And so you can expose your API uh, internally or externally um, via this gateway. And now you've aligned the failure domain of this gateway with the product that it's, that it's supporting. And so you're not, you won't have the shared gateway problem where other products could bring you down. Um, and it just requires you to stand up more gateways and then you'll be able to talk uh, cross cluster a lot easier. And we'll explain why in a sec. Um, then you can also push uh, your auth authentication and authorization circuit breaking up into this gateway and then tune it specifically for your applications that are behind it. And so it's a really purpose-built gateway um, for your product. Um, so in a, in a cluster, this is kind of what you would imagine logically what is happening from using a gateway. Um, the consumer namespace on the right here uh, is not related to the payments API product, but it does consume that API. And so, uh, logically, you should be consuming it at the gateway level. That allows you to scale microservices, add functionality behind it without interruption of that service. And so when, when we grow to a multi-cluster environment, this becomes really easy. We can then just replicate that payments namespace into another cluster with that gateway uh, in, as a whole package. And then the consumer namespace now has multiple endpoints to reach you at. And so we, we add those, those hosts to that consumer namespace. So now it has two options. So making your, your payments API high, highly available. But we didn't have to stop there. We can say, we can do some more intelligent routing that's saying, if your consumer is in the same cluster as the gateway that it's consuming, and that gateway is closer than say an external gateway in another cluster, let's prefer 
routing locally first. And so if you're in the same cluster, we can actually use the sidecar to act as the, the gateway. And so in this example, this is what we're doing. We're using the sidecar to act as the gateway to those microservices to access them directly. But in the case of failure or outage, we can actually reroute requests over to the cluster two in the US West region. Um, so you still get that highly available, but now we've added the component of this intelligent uh, local aware routing. This is really cost effective for our larger clients that have high volumes of traffic and egress, and they're paying a lot of for egress data. So why should you embrace gateways more than you are today? Um, it, it gives you a way to abstract your APIs in your microservices and, and with a product spin on it, a product focus. Um, it's really architected for growing those in a multi-cluster environment. Um, it's more of a copy paste than a one-off or trying to figure out who owns the local, uh, who owns the local uh, ingress gateway so you can attach your resources to it. Um, and then it aligns a lot more with the non-mesh architectures that exist today. Um, they're very load balancer centric. And so gateway really fits that, that load balancer. But we're just empowering the gateway to be a lot more intelligent about uh, the traffic that it's, that it's routing. Um, so if we put this all together and what we're doing at Tetra is we're making that gateway discovery automated. And so from any number of clusters that you, you can stand up, the gateways will automatically be discoverable in all other clusters. So that means we don't need to know about all the other services, uh, microservices running in other clusters. We just need to know where those gateway ingress, ingress gateways are. Uh, we are making sure that when you route to those other gateways outside of your own cluster, that it's encrypted and it's authorized. And then we're also implementing locality-based routing. So to improve your cost savings and then fail over, to fail over effectively. Um, and then finally, we're using um, a newer technology to SEO, which is mesh DNS, but it allows you to eliminate the need for that namespace routing that Vikas was talking about earlier. Um, you can essentially use your own abstracted DNS for these gateways. Um, to more represent the product that you're offering. Um, so hand over Vikas to talk a little bit more about how we're doing some of this uh, routing and gateway management. Thanks, Nick. All right, so, so from the service owner point of view, exposing a service to the external user has the same security concerns. If the, if the intention is to expose the service within the mesh, but to the remote clusters which are sitting across the public internet. So essentially whether it, so even the, even the request is coming from within the mesh, but it is coming through the public internet. So, in, so with this point, we, in our model, the service owner is supposed to just expose the service to the external world over the chosen uh, gateway port. And the user is supposed to configure the whatever security measures, authentication and authorization, he or she feels comfortable with to deal with the public internet uh, security concerns. And what we do programmatically is that the the, the gateway hosts, the APIs, which are exposed to the external world, we auto automatically expose these APIs within the mesh uh, to be consumed from the remote clusters. So what we do basically is that uh, this, uh, this 15443 is a reserved port for the Istio MTLS. We, we, we discover what the APIs are exposed to the external world and we expose the same APIs over Istio MTLS on this reserved port for the east-west traffic. And additionally, in addition to the Istio MTLS, we apply all the uh, authentication and authorization configurations, which are uh, which are which the user has configured for the external world traffic. We apply those on 
uh, in ad on this one five four four three port as well. So it is like double secure. In addition to that, now this is a very important slide. Uh, we create a local service entry as well. And the point to focus here is that the host name in the, the host name in the service, for example, here pay.example.com is same, the, is same as the host, which is exposed to be consumed by external world over 9443 port. What this means is that whether the client of the service is within this same cluster or in some other remote cluster or some external user, all are consuming this service with the same abstracted API pay.example.com. And the, the remote instances and the local instance are behind the same, are, are part of the same load balancer pool. So, and, and, and just one more implementation detail here. To achieve this, the endpoint in this service entry is the local Kubernetes cluster IP. And now this is how it will look uh, if there are more than one clusters where this uh, backend service has instances running. So this service entry in the local cluster has two endpoints. The one is the cluster IP of the local service instance. And this another one the, in the green color, this is, uh, this is the gateway IP address of the remote cluster where one more instance of the service is running. And now here, now we are going to see at runtime when the traffic, when the request flows from the client, how it, how, how load balancing happens and how it reaches the destination uh, endpoint destination uh, service. So first of all, uh, when the client makes a request, the client makes a request to the abstracted API, pay.example.com. Whether it is for the local links, uh, so the, the client uh, need not bother about where the service instance is running locally or globally or wherever it is. So abstracted API is used by the clients this goes uh, to the sidecar and in the sidecar we are using um, a feature where uh, the uh, where the proxy hijacks the dns queries and it caches the dns and uh, and and resolves the uh, resolves the dns query uh, with the virtual ip of the service entry uh, and then after the DNS query gets resolved, then that uh, request starts from the uh, from the client container with the with the virtual IP of the service entry. And now the site in the sidecar uh, matching with the virtual IP, the listener is picked up. The listener has um, the endpoints to the local instance as well as to the remote instances and because of the locality aware routing in ideal case the local instances are picked up and if th there is no local instance or the local instance is in failure mode then sidecar will, will route the request to the remote gateways and when it reaches the gateway the request is over the stm tls Plus, additionally, the gateway will authorize the request using the uh, using the extra authentication and authorization configurations which the user service owner has configured for the external uh, external world. So here, uh, it it can be any external auth service which will authorize the request in addition to STMTLS, and if everything passes then the request is gets routed to the actual instance so just to summarize here um, here we are using a abstracted api so there is no dependency directly on the backend service and the secondly the 
what API the service owner wants to expose, he has full control on on the expo in the, on the exposure of the APIs. For example, like whatever API he wants to expose to the consumed within the mesh or to the external world, uh, the service owner will expose this on the gateway. It is not that the whole cluster is being washed upon by the remote uh, remote clusters, remote studies. So because of the time constraint, uh, we could cover this much only. Though we are doing much more interesting stuff, we are doing um, um, multi-tier, uh, we are handling multi-tier architectures as well. We are handling where the clusters are in the, um, the clusters are in, are part of the different VPCs, which are not directly connected, but talking through a shared VPCs. So uh, we would really like to explain all these things, but because of time constraints, we cannot talk over this. So uh, we can take these things offline if you are interested in knowing more about this. And I think that's pretty much all. Thank you. Thank you.